welcome everybody to another Anus production where today I will be casting a King's Wrath match. Now we are playing on the um, Tiberium Gardens at the moment and this is actually going to be uh, quite different from the last game that I casted. Basically we're doing a, an FFA on Tiberium Gardens and uh, this is apparently a really good replay so I thought I'd choose to uh, cast this and we'll see exactly why it's good. And uh, yeah that's about it. Right let's get started. So, uh, obviously, we have no construction options. Daneki Building. as the green nod. Um, I can't quite assume complete. what is happening, uh, no whether it be uh, black and or whatever. Um, Gutti as the blue screen. Um, we have Eladron as purple GDI, or is it pink GDI? Uh, Bob as red screen. And then we have, finally, Anal check as a yellow screen. So we'll actually see what kind of factions they have. Um, so it probably is not exactly. Um, it's not black candle or anything. Uh, right at the moment, we, get, we see uh, uh, if we not go for shadow rush mode immediately, which will be quite interesting actually. Um, we've got a power plant there. Well, that will make um, Bob vulnerable. Um, and at the moment, uh, we've got the others just uh, doing you know the usual scouting and stuff. Um, I've got a warp sphere being a bu built here, uh, which will be interesting, some early vehicles. Um, Building. Anal Chick has gone for a foundry. That is actually rather dangerous, especially with an FFA, you're going against four of the players. So I don't think uh, Anal will be uh, surviving for very long, to be honest. Um, Bob has now uh, put up a buzzer hive. Uh, the shadows are still there, so that's going to be very problematic. Um, We've got some of, in, of Bob's units in the green base, um, construction and it, it is a bit difficult to remember names because there are five different players, so please Cancel. bear with me. Um, Ladron has been excited. expanding his um, economy a bit. I um, don't know quite what he plans to do, but I think just a few pitbulls are good, obviously attack. training our harvester, but I don't know how soon he's going to be able to send those pitbulls down, you know, because uh, it's very Cancel. uncertain at this moment because it's a free for it's not just one v one, you've got a lot more to worry about. Construction. Uh, we've got some tier 1 vehicles being sent out, probably to counter some of the infantry and some other like vehicles, as in attack bikes and fast other units from GDI and stuff. Um, uh, we've got also Gutty, a he, some units being trained over there, obviously extra economy, um, nothing really defense. too uh, amazing about that, it's the usual. Um, some scouting units, um, Unit just scouting them. That drawn over here, under and we've also got Bob as well. Uh, I think it's Bob. No, it's a, is it Ladron? Yeah, it's Ladron. Ladron's a uh, pit bull just do some scouting. So we've got Comfort over here. Probably some uh, GDI and Construction yeah. Oh no, it's actually not. It's um, so who is that? It is time for us. So, yeah, Zaneki. Zaneki's uh, attack bikes going to destroy a couple of harvesters. That will be quite useful, setting them back a bit, but that's can take a lot of damage. Um, let's see if Gash gets destroyed, that's actually really extraordinary. So, we're going to have to really able to save that second harvester. Um, Bob, I don't, I don't think Bob will be able to save it. No, it's going down. Um, he won't be able to produce anything quite quickly. He'll have to actually cancel uh, whatever he's building because that will be very problematic. Uh, it's a waste of resources, but he does actually get a few attack bikes. Um, oh, does he? No, he doesn't actually manage to get the last one, but he does get a few attack bikes, so he's gonna try and make sure that he's gonna get enough harvesters to recover from this, because otherwise he's gonna have no chance of surviving. Um, we've got uh, another pit ball coming from Ladron. Um, Gotti at the moment is expanding um, to more to get to the more front door here. Um, Fog goes up and gets some um, infantry, gets some other vehicles, lots of different harvesters uh, for. Um, Economy here. Um, got a here. Construction complete. Um, I think that Unit is done. No, nope, Bob's screener. Yeah, Bob's buzzer is currently just making sure everything's in order. We've got uh, Zanetsky producing some scorpions. Um, I don't know quite know. Don't quite know what he plans to do with them because not not many people can ha have really um, 
good counters for the Scorpions. I mean, there are a couple of uh, Seekers for Bob, but otherwise, he might be able to do quite a bit of damage with those Scorpions. That means there are three of them, and they take down uh, other vehicles more effectively than uh, a couple Training. of Seekers. So he may be able to do a lot of damage with that. Um, obviously, we've got Bob uh, training some more um, Seekers at the moment. Uh, we've got Conflict. Oh, two Conflicts over here. Um, damn. So we've got an Orca Strike coming in from Ladron at the moment. Ladron's got some air as well. Probably going for some Orcas, I believe. Uh, but then again, um, it's a bit dangerous at this moment um, with the air force and everything. But oh god, he's already got tier 3 up. He has already got tier 3 up. Ladron has already got tier 3. That's, that's rather quick. Um, I'm wondering, would he be able to plan an expansion and probably like, cover this area a bit? I know there's the ridge, which you'll. Um, he can't venture too far up this bit here because otherwise it, all, all the units will just destroy the structures, but um, he may want a bit of room at the moment. Um, oh no! Alright, so which faction is he then? If he's training hammerheads. Uh, we've got phase field coming down, obviously just trying to silence any sort of projection of any units, but if he's training hammerheads, he's, he might be training some uh, zone readers, uh, but I don't quite see um, uh, like any zone uh, shatterers or anything. Um, Zaniski has moved his MCV. Where is he moving his MCV? Uh, yes, we have got attack from Zaniski to Bob at the moment, destroying some anti human units. Uh, but I can't see his MCV. His Conyard seems to be destroyed, actually. I think. He must be, because I don't see it anywhere. And he hasn't got any radar, so I could assume so. Uh, Gotti is currently moving, his, uh, expanding there with a hexapod, which has already got some infantry in it. I believe there's some siege grenades in there, um, and some tripods to help uh, corrupt, uh, corrupt it, obviously, to help deal with Hexy. Um, the drone has got, uh, is training a Marv at the moment. Yep, he's a uh, he's Zocom, definitely. So we know that he's Zocom, so he's got to go for a uh, combination of Hammerhead and um, Enemy units Zone Readers, which will help tremendously, although Bob's having a lot of trouble at this moment because he's having to defend against many Scorpion tanks. Um, uh, Zaniski is nicely putting the pressure on Bob at the moment. I don't know if he'll be able to effectively counter it because he, he's looks to be taking a lot of damage and he does not really have many resources at the moment. Um, I don't see any other harvesters. Um, but we already have Redeemer goes out. Uh, Hexapod goes to Ladron. Um, will he actually be able to uh, save at least protect the base a little bit? Um, I'm not sure. Um, it seems that the Hexapod just goes straight in there. Um, it, it has to actually back away. Um, those engineers in the world really do a lot of good. And oh, boom! There we go. So Bob has been defeated already. So Bob's out of the game already. Um, Zanitsky put a nice bit of pressure on him. So there's one player out of the game. Sonic a bit uh, um, ready for um, the drone at the moment, just so that just to protect his base in case of any um, unseen circumstances. Firehawks coming in, going to probably going to. Um, I can't remember your name now. <laughs> Not Zaniski, Gotti. There we go. So Gotti is actually currently uh, training lots of ground units at the moment, but they've obviously we've got some gunwalks and seekers which will help him destroy the firehawks, but the firehawks are rather quick, so I don't know how effective that will be. Um, we haven't really been looking at, um, over here, the yellow screen, which is anal. Um, we've got lots of high tier units here, uh, as well as low tier, uh, which makes sense, because defending against infantry, air and vehicles, so we've got quite a, a selection over here, mass man being trained, probably going to be, maybe being used in, um, the Hexy? No, but there's actually no reason the Hexy, so probably not. Uh, but that will definitely be useful. If he manages to um, sneak that Mastermind in, that will probably give him a Building. lot of a, a, a very, very strong backbone. Um, and probably will gain him such a big advantage over the others. Um, we've got some conflict down at uh, the drone space. Uh, yep, we've got to just, just some units. Just a nice clean up over here. Um, got a nice decent amount of hammerheads. Um, and another additional MCV, uh, which will probably either be used as an expansion or just another production queue, because obviously you can make defences with MCVs. Um, and otherwise, they're being everyone's being really careful at this moment, because obviously there are one, there's one, two, three epic units at the moment. Um, we're not seeing an epic unit being built by Zaniski at the moment. Unit under attack. Um, Zaniski is obviously trained. Two MCVs. 
Um, so long as he has enough money, but he doesn't really have enough money now, so that's probably, that may be a waste at the moment. He's got some Scorpion tank to defend the ground, but because of the um, the amount of the, the ground, the high tier units and everything, I don't think they would hold. And obviously, he's going to plan to take this spot, which is obvious because of the free time unit and stuff. But I don't know how well that fair. No one. The really uh, the only problem Siniski has is Ladron because he has Firehawks and Hammerheads. But we'll see how well that goes, because um, I don't think Zaniski doesn't really have many um, air defenses yet. Um, we've got Gutty making a uh, a drive to go for Ladron. Uh, Ladron's Harvest is getting a beating over here, even with the ball, and um, they're not really uh, doing much. Uh, quite a few go down. Oh, and there comes Hammerhead. There come the Hammerhead, pummeling that Hexapod. He's going to lose that Hexapod. There's no... Whoa. There we go. Um, yeah. Right, oh yeah, he teleported it, so he just managed to teleport it there before it did, got destroyed, which is quite lucky. Um, a lot takes bigger damage, but almost got quite a few harvesters there. I mean, that one's nearly dead. But I have a feeling Ladrona's going to use those hammerheads to come to um, go to base, I think. Uh, even though with all the air defences and everything, um, so long as he has enough, he might be able to do it. Um, I think the Hexy yeah, will probably be his main priority though, because he doesn't have much uh, anti-air at the moment. Um, he's currently uh, still got one uh, AA uh, anti-defense here, or at uh, least anti-air for it. Um, lots of gun walkers and everything to prepare for that uh, giant hammerhead attack. Oh, we've got a um, hexapod transported in by anal here. We're going to attack the harvesters. And what happens to goes down, which is interesting. Um, I don't know if we'll be able to actually do much, much damage, obviously, because it's now focusing on two players. Um, so he's got double the um, worry now, um, but we'll see. That tech lab looks quite appetizing right now, to be honest. Um, tri ha tripod's coming in to try and deal with the hexapod. Will he be able to get it out of time? Probably. Um, oh god, face field goes down. But then again, the hexapod gets um, EMP'd, so I don't know how long uh, that will be, but I think the EMP will be worn off before that shield, so he should be able to uh, destroy the tech center before them. So that's rather interesting. Oh, and then we've got a uh, good hexapod going for... Um, Anals, uh, harvesters. So we've got a bit of a, a like a swap uh, at the moment, but not much going on. Uh, both hexapods are rather damaged and then just been transported back to their base, which is the, so they're just doing that. We've got so they've got shields, so an anal must be screened. Um, so we've got some packs that will really help uh, with ground forces and anti air. We've got fire holes coming down from the drone, going back to base as well. That was a really cheeky move by the drone, but um, he was lucky that all of his. Um, uh, Wildhawk survived, so that was that was actually really, really effective, but he almost lost the war. So that was rather um, risky, but if he could do it again, that may be good. I'm probably going for this power plant, even though there's quite a, a nice broad coverage of all the anti-air batteries. Uh, we'll see if it works again. Um, this is rather tight at the moment. Uh, we've got lots of units being built up, but uh, no direct attacks, obviously. Uh, let's see how uh, Zanisky's doing. Zanisky's doing. Oh, wow, he's doing rather well. A lot of map coverage, obviously, because he's got the extra Tiberium. Um, I think he might be the overall victor, um, to be honest, because he's got the massive economy, and he's got quite a lot of uh, production going on here. We've got some attack fighters probably good for scouting as well. I don't see any uh, tech center, so he might not have full um, here. We've got an operation center, so he might not be able to tech center yet, but he'll probably need to eventually, and really soon, because the others have got the hexes and everything. Um, we've got Anal Cynic Hexy going down for Gutties again, uh, probably just trying to um, take out uh, the structures one by one. Again, Tripod's coming in, trying to EMP that Hexy. Will it be able to use the shield again? I don't think so. It just immediately gets teleported back. Uh, damn. That was almost a good plan. Uh, we've got some, a lot of drawn um, conflict here. Um, the Hammerhead's finally getting sent out. I uh, don't know where they're going. Probably go for Anal Space, it looks like it. Yeah. Um, oh, oh, if you want it, yes, he managed to go for the Hexapod, he finds the Hexapod, now he's going for the Hexapod, uh, will he be able to do anything, oh, probably it has mass fighting in there, so he might be able to transport it to back to base, but, obviously, will he be able to destroy it, actually, has it already been used, I'm not sure, he's just letting it die, there we go, he finally managed to transport it, but that almost got killed, so he's probably got enough for a good amount of attack, but because there's so many gun walkers, I'm not sure whether that'll be effective or not, um, maybe with a Marth, Maybe, I don't know, but it would be a bad idea. So he's training actually more Firehawks, but he's going to have to hurry soon because we've got uh, 
um, got his hands pod, uh, a little bit threat. Um, Aiden Rocknet yet again going for Gatti at the moment. Threading up a nice amount of aircraft here, which will probably decimate most of the units in the area. Um, Zeniski going for a scouting unit. Sees all those flaming <laughs> aircraft, uh, that's going to be putting him at quite a bit of night, um, because obviously Zeniski is over here. Um, even though he has a spike expanded here, but he isn't quite safe. Um, again, another attempt going for Gutty's uh, Hexy. Um, I don't know if he'll be actually able to get that destroyed because of the mastermind in there. There we go. Orbe just goes straight back. Um, I do feel that these aircraft here are going to pommel Gutty into non-existence. Um, even with all the end defenses, it's probably going to um, leave him incapacitated at the least um, and probably go force someone else up the match, so there's probably going to be three people, and there's a hand of nod going, oh, so he must feel safe if he's going to do that in the first place, so that's going to put everybody on high alert now, that is, that is definitely a risky move, but if he feels safe enough to do that, then I suppose we can't really fault him for doing that, let's actually check his base, Gutty, Nisky, um, yeah, she's got plenty going on there, we've got airport, we've got tech center, we've got Tiberium plant, Got air defenses. We've got quite a lot here going on. A massive amount of tabloids and readers here for some reason. I don't quite know what they're being used for. Really, I think they should go for avatars, maybe some spectres to try and cover this front door here. But it's hard to say at this moment. Uh, light tier units covering this uh, MCB are now probably going for ground control because obviously there's Tavium in the middle there. But probably might base crawl over to this bit and transport some units over to this Tavium field to try and um, distract the drone. But it's hard to say at the moment. I don't know if that would be necessarily a wise choice, um, but that's what he's going for. So going on for two fronts um, at the moment, um, obviously, because we've got Anal there and Ladron over here. Um, but the thing is, Ladron and Anal both have a unique ability. We've got lots of units going for the Hexapod again. This time it's an escape. Loads of uh, light tier units. Probably, they might be actually up to the it, maybe, if he's not paying attention. Um, nope, he just manages to save it. But oh my god, that was, that was lucky. That almost got destroyed. That yeah, that was a huge wipe for units there. And now he's going to chase, chase the actual hexapod. What are you doing with all these units? That's a waste of money. So we look at how many um, anti-vehicular units are there. I don't. But then again, he probably doesn't realise that. But yeah, that was a quite a big loss, even for those attack bikes. No matter if they're cheap, he's trained quite a few of them, so that's quite a bit of money. But then again, he's got 24,000, so I think he's quite well off for economy-wise. So I really do think he should train some avatars, maybe some uh, vertical bombers, at least a redeemer, definitely, because that would definitely help him. Because look, I, the, they have he has enough resources anyway. Um, I think he's the best well-off player um, because the other three are struggling with the resources. So as so long as uh, Sinistral plays his cards right, he probably will uh, win this match overall since he's already eliminated Bob um, and he's got the. Templar nod. Although I'm wondering, will um, Anal or Gutti transport the hex pod over to where the Templar nod is? Because obviously it can be sealed by all players. And if he manages to do that, they'll also might have to take out Air Tower and possibly Templar, which will put um, him in jeopardy, I think. Um, so I would also recommend putting some obelisks. Not where the players can see them, but where just enough so that they have a little bit of defense. Um, so that's a really big issue there. If one of them, or even both of them, manages to teleport the hexapod to the Temple of Nod, that will render them pretty much defenseless. Because he's training mostly, um, always now and he's building avatars, but he's mostly training ground forces to for the front lines here, but he's not really focusing on the rear side. But we don't really know yet. Um, go back to Non at the moment. Um, Firehawks being sent by Ladron, obviously to, just trying to pick off air, air defenses. Um, quite a nice horse being built here by Gotti, but not quite enough to so that um, you can't resist um, Anal here. Got a lot of packs and devastators and tripods here. That exapod may go down because um, even if he uses the ability, he's probably going to go straight into the base. Um, although he has got he's built up quite a lot of air defenses, so that may yeah, keep him alive for a little bit longer. Um, Oh, that was close. I mean, that, that was how little health he's got now. Um, I would say that um, Anor may be able to build some more, obviously, units here. And so long as he keeps building, keeps building, he might be able to actually do a lot of damage to one of the players here. Let's have a look. Anor has quite a lot of resources at the moment. Obviously, he has over 8,000 resources, over 8,000 credits. So he might actually develop a better uh, overall attacking force. 
than any of the other players. Although, um, I suppose Zaniski would present a problem because he's got a lot of resources and he can do a lot of things. Uh, but we'll see at this moment. It's very it's very hard to determine exactly which player will go down first now. Um, or go down next rather, because Bob went down first because of the um, uh, risky move to... Uh, well, he basically ran out of resources first. But um, Anal quite recovered quite nicely. Even building a foundry there, he's built a lot. And he's become quite a familiar with what he's acting with. Um, so we'll see exactly where this takes us because this is really interesting. I mean, we've got still got the masterminds there. Not really being used for anything, trying to keep it safe and everything, but if he if he manages to do it right, he may be able to control the drone platform and that may um, if he has some structures ready that could provide some instant ground control so he may like put iron columns possibly to destroy the air defenses, then um, send some uh, aircraft in to destroy the rest of Gutty. Um, obviously we've got surveillance being used by the drone, uh, we haven't really looked at him yet. Let's have a look. The drone is Still building up some hammerheads, we've got some roll of ground units, we've obviously got some zone readers and we've got some grenadier squads. Um, maybe using for them for attacking the ground, but they're not very effective. I wouldn't really, personally I wouldn't really use these units because they're not really good for that sort of thing. I mean they're good for clearing out structures, but there's really no structures that you can garrison at this moment. Um, obviously the Lodron's running his um, bar towards um, the Eradicator. Um, obviously he can't really do much because of the Corruptors there, but just seeing what, uh, if he can bring out those forces, you know. And we've got an iron cannon being built by Ladron, so there's two super weapons that are going to be placed down soon. Uh, that's even managed to place it down. Um, one minute on the timer for Zaniski's uh, Temple of Nod. I'm surprised if the um, anal or gutty, they haven't made a move to try and destroy it. Yes, we've got bombers there, but if he's quick, he might be able to destroy the air tower before they take off. Um, because. He'll be focusing on the front lines here, but if he has no air tower, that means he can't immediately Maybe react to it, because most of his units are, are there. Building. Uh, but I suppose most of the other players are focusing on each other, so he may use his um, front, uh, front line units to destroy the hexapod. Who knows, but I'm surprised they haven't made a move yet. Oh god, we're already at um, 25 seconds. 25 seconds from there before that launches. Um, got some conflict over here. Anal has tried to get a lot of units here. We've got quite a packed up unit. Um, it'll be actually interesting. Where will he launch this nuclear missile? Where will um, Zinesky launch it? Because obviously, three players, he can launch it anywhere, but if we act ultimately determine who will win. Um, two seconds, one second, let's see where it launches. Oh no, he's right. So he's keeping that safe keeping, I suppose. He's not really launching it just yet. Um, I really don't think that's a decoy though, um, because I don't think that Nod has a decoy version, the decoy power, I think that's Black Hat or Mark. Um, but we've also we've got some, the front door of the drone is being used, oh god, using some zone raiders, probably destroyed some of Zaniski's uh, units. Um, oh no, we've got the Marv actually, so yeah, that's going to be a bit problematic, and obviously we've got the Harvester there. Um, uh, Zaniski keeping tabs on the Harvester there, uh, uh, Ladron's Harvester, because and nicely, Zinniski's harvesters are getting us cloaked, and he's taking rather a lot. Whoa! Whoa, okay, we've got a massive attack going from Zinniski. Go right to the drone. Even with all the air defenses, there's not enough. Nuclear bomb goes off. Most of the units get destroyed, and all the aircraft, so they render him completely incapable of, of providing a counter attack. Loads of units coming over here. We've got a giant swarm going to the front of the base. Marv goes down pretty much. That's destroyed. Even with all the air defenses. Um, all the uh, hammerheads go in, trying to destroy the venom, trying to have a look at all the bases and everything. All the ground forces are pretty susceptible, to be honest, to that. Um, fire hooks go up, make sure that nothing happens. Those hammerheads really have done a lot of good for him. And now they're going to decimate off the ground. That almost worked. Even with the suspectors, probably going to try and provide some supporting fire. That almost goes down. If he manages to destroy that, there we go, he's destroyed that. That's actually put them quite a far down. Um, his um, tech centre got destroyed. So that's put it back quite a bit. Even with those hammerheads, he's going to have to train up another mob again, which is really vulnerable. That was actually a good move. That was, even though he's lost all his units, it's a shame that he's lost all his units, but Zaniski has done a lot of damage, a lot of damage to the Ladron. So that was, that was a very good move. I'm surprised he went for him. Um, so now he's vulnerable. Um, oh my god, Zaniski's covered a lot of the map, so I feel that Zaniski's going to win this, because the amount of resources and the map he's covered, he's covered up one fifth, well, two fifths of it now. Um, He's got a lot of force being built up by Anal at the moment, so this is getting very intense, it's building up to a climatic moment at the moment, um, so it's getting very interesting. Um, 
I don't think Ludron will be able to counter um, Zeniski at the moment because obviously look at all the defences. Um, he's, co he's covering his economy quite well actually because of the obelisks and uh, the mines over there and the sand turrets and everything. So he's keeping tabs quite well actually, I would say. Hexapod goes in again, almost heroic now. So if he manages to get that to a heroic, that's going to give Gutti a nice big advantage over um, Anal. All everything just being sent over there. Let's actually check of this. That's, no, that's uh, quite far behind actually. Um, Anal's Hexapod is not as high up in the ranking chain as Zenisky. No, I mean um, Gutti's. Um, so again, being uh, healed. Uh, the tripod's being kept for safekeeping, obviously. Not really training anything. Um, I don't think he has any. Um, you know, any money. Um, he has quite a bit of money, probably saving that just to defend his base, fortify his position, but he's not really doing anything. He's not building up a nice force. Obviously, more corruptors, but I would say try and build up some uh, packs or something, because that would help against air and ground, um, because that multi wall and everything. Saving a plasma missile battery, and he's, he's just building a reactor right now to make sure he has enough power. Um, Amy will send another hex pod again, and this is just, um, just trying to pick off all the units and everything. It's just the uh, swapping all the time between these two, so probably will be happening a long time into the battle. The drone has taken a l big, big hit from Zinisky. He only has a few um, structures left, even with the um, Space Command uplink. I don't think he'll be able to survive that long. Um, Firehawks go and try and take a look at uh, Zinisky himself. Anor is still attack. doing pretty much the same. Um, I wonder... Oh my god, that's a lot of attack bikes. Um, he has to be, uh, <laughs> the drone will have to be careful actually, but there's, then again there's a huge opening over here. Uh, bombers go again, which structure are they going to do? Are they going to get the barracks or are they going to get the space command uplink? I think they can uplink if they can, but they're going to have to see. Oh my god, the, fight, the hammerheads, boom, down instantly. Um, and obviously they're going to have a risk the harvesters going into his base now, so I'm not sure if this is actually going to work out very much. Um, uh, again, we've got uh, Gutti's Hexapod going in for another time. They're not stopping. He's still trying to pick up something, at least. But he's not doing a very good job because of the how well fortified Anal is at the moment. This is actually a really interesting match. How um, this really, uh, really climactic at the moment. Um, I'm excited to see who will actually prevail um, and become the winner of this match because it's getting really good, really, really intense. I think Madron is going to go down now. Um, it's most likely going to die down. Oh my god, we've got a sneak attack by the time I, I'm surprised he managed to get it in there in the first place. Um, uh, uh, avatars go down. We've got some, the Tiberium upgrade for the um, attack bikes. Um, quite a few of the hammerheads go down as well, uh, but not enough to actually do anything. Still quite a few to defend his base with, but luckily he manages to, to get a harvester into Ledron's base and steal some Tiberium. Um, I'm surprised he hasn't found out yet because... Um, oh yeah, he hasn't got um, a war factory. Uh, but then again, he could build uh, watch towers to monitor the to, uh, the path to the harvesters. So I don't know. I don't know why um, Ladron has to tra uh, built that to be honest, because that would actually help um, his Tiberium just, just at least leave it there, um, because he has got a very tiny amount, um, and I don't know how long we'll be able to last. Um, a third MCV goes up. Um, at least it's the third. Uh, it's either that or he's just moved it up. I'm not sure, but that. Tiberium Calcul Plant always, almost goes down, um, and his bombers get destroyed, I wonder who that is. Oh, that's a very sneaky attack there, that's very good, using the Devastators, that's very good. Using the Wormhole to, do, to deploy in his base, risking the destruction of his structures, that's very useful. So he's probably going to try and meet the Devastators. He's not much, there's not much anal could do at the moment, because he's destroying his entire base, trying to destroy the Hexapods, so that's very good. That's the only weakness with the Devastators. If you had more packs, I suppose, that would be um, better. But now we've got a heroic one. It's now changed to heroic. That is quite a big aerial force there. Um, I don't quite know whether it would be uh, either of these sprint factions or if it would be um, Zeniski here. We've got, obviously, we've got the um, disruption towers going up uh, to try and hide the base. And the Spectres, I'm not sure what the Spectres would quite be used for, but. They could probably do a lot of damage to Ladron. Ladron's given up, so Ladron's officially out of the match. There's not much he can do because there's little Tabia Tiberium, and there's just not much. So he's given up. So there's two players out of the game, so he's immediately taking the land of Ladron. So I think, I really do think that um, Zidisky will be winning this match because he's almost coming three fifths of the map. Um, he's managing very well with his um, the land that he's claimed, um, and Anal and. Um, 
Gutty have only claimed a little bit, so we'll see where this goes. Um, Gutty moving his uh, drone platform up against the bridge here. Will that put the uh, drone platform in danger though? I'm not sure. Um, even with the Hexapod trying to distract all the units here, that's going to be really dangerous because that's really close to where the ships are. Um, Obviously, all we got a harvester um, not really being monitored very well. Uh, going for the harvest, the Tiberium there. Lots of disintegrators going there, um, and a couple of uh, nearly dead plasma batteries. Um, so it's basically a waiting game now. Zaniski's going to buy his time, try to take all the um, to take all the land, um, and really effectively uses all these units. Um, obviously, he's going to gain land control. Um, sending a militant squad out to try to have a look. Nuclear missile gets launched! Nuclear missile gets launched! Where does it hit now? Is it going to be Gotti? It's going to be Gotti. It's going to be most Gotti units. Oh, that's a lot of gold walkers that have gone down. Damn. That's almost the walk has almost got destroyed as well. So that's very interesting. If if only the other players would know. Oh god, um, Anal's moving in. Anal's actually moving in. So because he saw the... Um, he might have noticed that, it, yeah, he did notice that he might have forgot it, because otherwise he'd see his own base. So now he's moving in, he's moving on Gotti, he's actually got to moving on Gotti, and it's going to probably just decimate him, actually. So, I think Gotti's actually going to go down, um, because he hasn't got much of a defence now, because all those um, gold walkers have been destroyed, even with those small defences, it's not going to be enough to hold them off. Um, I don't actually know where his, uh, Gotti's hexapod is. Oh, Gotti's hexapod is up there. So, he's, he's actually alright right now, um, got the uh, drone platforms, no, not drone platforms, apart from missile batteries, doing nothing because they're out of range. The Devastators have the most range of uh, destroying those thingies there. Um, try to keep the surface much units as you can. There's no way he's going to be able to actually defend all this. Um, they've got lots of corruptors trying to heal as many units as they can. Um, they probably should be focusing on a hex spot though because it's taking quite a bit of a beating. Lots of units trying to destroy it. Um, I haven't. I really wonder why they haven't moved in. I know they have um, got, you know, got some tripods in but if they're lucky they might be able to power down the hex spot. Um, and probably render it uh, a little bit uh, incapacitated for like, a few seconds at least. But all the air defenses move in, trying to get trying swiftly. But but the air defenses uh, they're actually uh, upholding their value quite nicely there. They're, they're still remaining strong. So I don't know if we'd actually be successful at this. But the uh, definitely the warships are doing a lot of damage. The warp chasm goes down. A couple of power plants go down. Um, a lot of air defenses being built by Gutti, so most of his units have actually been destroyed right now. So what what will um, Gutti do now? Well, he sent all his forces back into Anor's space and destroy it now that most of his air is uh, destroyed now. It's all of it now. Um, there's no one here being able to recover. Um, obviously, we've got uh, Spike being built, uh, being uh, port ported into uh, Gutti's space, but I don't think Anor will be able to stop it. We've got some disintegrators going down, trying to hopefully destroy something, but that's utterly useless because the hex spot is there. Um, now uh, Anal's actually rather vulnerable because of how little Tiberium's there. Um, I don't think he'd be able to actually do anything. Um, Siniski's slowly building across the map, trying to claim as much Tiberium as possible and hopefully build um, to a very big army. Um, I don't know why he hasn't got a Redeemer out yet. This will be the perfect time for it because that could be used probably as a distraction. And also with the race gen as well, that would probably be useful um, in case he was attacking any one of these bases because most of these units are idle at this moment. They're not really being used for anything. And if they don't manage it quite well enough, the, um, the entire force and probably most of the base would get destroyed. So I think the Redeemer at this point would actually be very good. Oh, they got cheeky move in by one of the players. I think that was anal. Um, uh, jeopardizing some of the structures because of the spectres, but not much anyway. Um, so it's basically a waiting game now for Zaniski because he knows he's got all the power. He's knows he's got he, he's got quite a lot of units. He's got pretty much most of the land now. Um, there's no way for the other two to actually gain any other land. This, the actual pod actually goes in uh, from Gotti. There's no way that Anal will be able to survive this now. All the disintegrators get destroyed. Um, if he manages, to, oh, so, um, Anal tries to with his drone platform, but there's no way he's going to... He can't go anywhere, because um, Zaniski's got his randoms ready to um, completely destroy everything. He sells most of his structures to try and maintain a few... Um, a, a little bit of resources so that he can build up again. Oh god, he's going to lose his, he's going to lose his drone platform, I bet, because it's really close. Oh god, now Zaniski can see it now. Um, he's found it, so is he going to do anything? Is he going to actually take the drone platform? I'm not sure. Um, but he's, he's in a bit of a rock and a hard place now, because he's got the venoms there. And vertigo bombers, um, and then he's got the hexapod with the um, Gutti, and Gutti's actually moving his drone platform towards the Tamirum just to get a little bit more. So he's pushing quite violently towards um, where Anal was, Anal, Anal's spawning position. So it's going to be a battle between Gutti and um, 
uh, Zanisky, but ultimately I think Zanisky's going to win because of the amount of units he's got and of the, how spread he is, but how fortified he is as well. It's not just because he's spread, it's because he's very well fortified. The defences have been quite... Um, he's been very thoughtful about the defences, how they've been constructed, where he might be attacked and everything. This is probably what's going to be a win for Zanisky. I'm going to be surprised if Zanisky actually gets defeated by Gutti. I don't know, any, I don't see any weakness to be honest. Um, that uh, Zinski has, he's maintained everything quite well. I suppose we got this area, we've got this area here, I suppose, but they're, they're being maintained by Venoms. Um, if, if he manages to get some vehicles across, which I don't think he will, um, he, oh, he's actually risking it. He's actually risking going, going into Zinski's face. I think he's going to lose his um, drone platform. I think Anal's going to be out of the match next. Um, we've got quite a bit of uh, conflict going between Zinski and Gutti, um, trying to heal the mass line, the only mass line he has. I think he's going to lose all those units, though. So. Loads of account type bikes and Venoms going in. To destroy the hexapod, obviously it gets transported over there, but that's not going to be any use now. That hexapod's got to go down. There's no way he's going to keep that alive anymore um, because he used the teleporter ability. He probably should have put it over at this base there. Uh, so bye bye Hexy at the moment. Oh no, giant uh, AMP coils trying to put the hexapod down. He uses the invincible vulnerability power right there, right there. So that's going to be really uh, the last chance calls. So now he's going to be moving in and trying to destroy as many uh, air defenses as he can. He's really lucky at that at that point in time. Mastermind almost uh, killing everything. Um, if he can manage to get uh, uh, like um, maybe an avatar or something, but he's gonna make sure he doesn't uh, get killed by the venoms. Venoms are very good. Oh, he's taking the control of the stuff tank. Um, I don't know how well that will do. Uh, we've got some seekers going in for the kill, trying to get trying to get a flanking position for the um, avatars. That will do extra damage because it's there behind them. The spectres get absolutely annihilated because they can't really do anything and they're very slow to unpack and everything. Um, Gutting, trying to go in for the kill, trying to protect him. Oh, the hexapod goes down. He managed to destroy the hexapod. That goes down, that's dead. Um, so the vertigo bombers are trying to retreat back as quickly as they can. Um, that's how the drone platform is probably dead as well. I don't know, but they might be able to save it because there's only two uh, avatars there. That was a really, really lucky move by um, Gutting there. That was really lucky. Um, I plan, I think now that the nuke is going to launch in his base over here. And he's probably going to launch all of his vertigo bombers trying to. Uh, destroy the important structures, the uh, warp sphere, um, drone platform, and the gravity stabilizers, just so they can't rebuild again, and then next we'll go for the um, technology assimilator, although there's lots of air defenses there, so I don't know if he will, um, but I don't know if he knows if he, uh, about these, all these air defenses. So this, is, this is a really good holdout moment, he's trying to attack, uh, trying to attack what's left of his, uh, what, this giant encampment, pretty much. Well, that perhaps that uh, Albert won't go down because of how well defended it is. Um, obviously, we've got some attack bikes, providing some um, support fire. Um, Vertigo's go in. Well, they're going for the. Yep, they're going for the tripods. One of the tripods go down. No, they don't actually go down. Um, what two of them are nearly dead? They'll probably be able to spawn on the power to heal them. The reconstruction drones. So they'll be able to heal those tripods. Gutti might um, actually um, luckily have the couple of tripods, but we can't really save certain. Um, I don't see any other attempt being made by Gutti, no, I mean Zeniski, to destroy the tripods, but I've, unfortunately we've got um, a lot of harvesters at the moment. Will he try and um, exploit this bit here? Because he doesn't see, um, I know that um, uh, Gutti doesn't see any advances here, so he's going to advance onto this um, uh, resource economy here. The, the radar gets jammed, so he immediately puts, pulls back. I don't know why he does though, exactly, because he could just forward it, and uh, that could be... Um, really useful in um, shaving, is just shedding his economy down quite a bit. Um, obviously he's wearing for defences, vertical bombers go down, obviously he takes a few grand units with him, but he doesn't really prove really very effective because uh, of how little units he has. Um, he doesn't think that he needs so many units to try and deal with all this, but he should really push as much as he can towards this, uh, these refineries, um, because otherwise um, it, he'll just, as Zeniski will just claim everything. And surprisingly, oh my god, uh, surprisingly, Angel has managed to last. Um, because he's trying to, uh, because Zeniski is concentrating with um, Gutti here, Angel has give, been given a chance to try and reconstruct his, a little bit of his base. So now he's got a, a formidable, formidable force at the moment. Um, because he can now um, exploit the weak point of the base. And they're now advancing, Anal is now advancing his forces to the base. Well, how much will he be able to destroy in, the short, in a such a short time? Um, I'm not totally sure. He might be able to destroy the power plants. I think go for the power plants will actually be very, very effective because he's got five here overall. And if he doesn't go for the power plants, then that uh, that will be able to power down the nuclear missile. Um, and it'll, a big, big hit will be um, taken by Zaniski from Gutti's um, rift generator, which is somewhere, which is over there, right at the back of the base. Um, 
obviously. It's going into the front of the base. Obviously, scouting is important, but why? Why not just target all the power plants? That is a bit of a stupid move, to be honest, because otherwise you would have um, exploited the weakness of Zaniski and probably put him uh, to disadvantage for at least a few minutes, um, and that would uh, slow him down a bit, which will allow Gotti to um, at least take out a nice chunk. But Gotti's doing a tremendous job of uh, destroying all the rest of these uh, refineries here. Really, really good job. Um, Eliminating a lot of the space here. I don't know if um, Gucci will actually take this space. There is a bit of Tiberium, and he could do with a bit of uh, land, to be honest. He could uh, actually do with a bit of an expansion, but he's ha having a bit of trouble trying to maintain this expansion already. Um, I'm not sure how many um, synchronizers are for Roic. I don't know. Although, uh, there is, I think there's one. But maybe here I don't know. But we've obviously we've got a nice comeback from Gotti at the moment. Um Zinch there, not to miss the um Anal's trying to do his best to destroy the drone platform. Um but that is to prove futile. There's no way he's Oh wait, he might he might actually destroy it. Let's see if he actually destroys it. I don't I don't know if he will or not. He might actually destroy it before it um before that seeker gets destroyed. So we will actually see. He settles it down trying to repair it and see if he can um de you know deploy some de uh, defenses or something. Um, I don't know if he'll be able to do anything at the moment, um, but he's not really firing on it much. That the seeker's almost destroyed. I think it's going to be destroyed. Oh, yep, it's gone. That was a that was almost worked, but it didn't work as well as it thought it would. But I thought he would have pummeled it and just you know focused its entirety of attacks on, on that uh, drone platform because otherwise that would have put that would have been a waste of money for uh, Gutty at the moment. Um, we've got uh, Zaniski maintaining quite a lot of resources, but it's down to 1,600 credits now, so he's running out of resources really quickly. So this might be his downfall at the moment. Oh, quite a few structures being eliminated um, on this Enemy ridge here. Um, no move by... Oh god, what is, what is Anal doing? What is Anal doing? Is he just quitting the match now? Is he just quitting the match? Is that it? He's got absolutely no structures whatsoever. So what is he doing? He's got a harvester and a few disintegrators. What is he doing? Is he just quitting now? I would imagine so. And there's a glitch for some reason, but never mind. Um, we've got a reactor. Yep, there goes um, anal. So it's now down to two capacitors. Um, I honestly, I don't actually know who will be successful. Oh, anal actually manages to get the uh, export out yet again, but I don't know how effective that would be. What? Zaniski quit? Zaniski actually quit? Oh my god, that was that is surprising. Do you know, I didn't actually think Zaniski would quit. He's, he's... Oh my god, that is a surprising end. That was such an intense match. I mean, I, honestly, this has been one of the best matches I've ever seen in my... Uh, in, well, after the very few casting that I've done, for the few matches that I've done, that's been really interesting. I mean, the, the tactics that all of them used, that was really really intense. I'm surprised. I've got to say this. I'm actually surprised that Zaniski actually quit because yes, he didn't have any resources, but if he was careful, he might be able to um, put, um, I don't know really how, but obviously uh, he might be able to put a Gotti at a disadvantage, but I suppose Gotti knew what he was doing and so long as he um, foxed himself into that little bit of land he had, it didn't really matter how, how often the enemies attacked him all the time. It, it would just... Uh, it just rendered him uh, like more powerful, I suppose, because then the, the enemy would have lost their units. But Goodie really surprisingly manages to last that long. I never really didn't really go out and try and steal the land. He just stayed in, built as many defenses as possible, and just tried to stay out. So yeah, I'm surprised Zanisky quit from that. But unfortunately, because there's no Tiberium left, there's not much he can do. Um, I thought he would have done something with the Vertigos. I'm trying to destroy maybe the Hexapod. Obviously, he had to find out where it was in the first place, but he could have sent one of the militant squads to have a look at exactly where it was, but I was, that was really intense. And the drum, also, really good effort by him. Um, trying to stay out. Those hammerheads almost worked. They almost worked. Um, if you tried, if you may, possibly, maybe, um, focus his efforts on building more hammerheads, he might have won. He might have actually um, destroyed Zaniski, but... Well, it's Zenki. I keep calling him Zenki, but you know what I mean. Um, sorry for the, the mispronunciation there. But, wow. I, it's unfortunate, I must admit. Um, I feel sorry for Bob, because he went down quite early in the match. Um, maybe because he was too slow, or maybe because he didn't, have, just didn't really focus on economy much. Um, Anal, obviously, really lucky with him. Um, I really, really wish Anal actually focused on the power plants. That would have been boom, it. Um, but... 
to be honest, there was there wouldn't really be much that Ana would be able to do at that point because Gotti had all the power, they had all the defenses and all the units, so as so long as they stayed in, they would just kill themselves. So Gotti, really good, but I'm surprised. Um, Zaniski had, had it so well during that match, he was really onto it, he was really claiming a lot of land, it was going really well for him, and it just fell because no Tiberium left, so really, really, I feel, I'm very sympathetic with Zenki, to be honest, because that was a really good match, he almost won, he really did, I was surprised, I, I am still quite gobsmacked that he quit from that match, but that was a really, really good, really good match, so I really enjoyed that, hope you really did enjoy that, obviously, if you've got any um, wishes or changes you want me to do with the casting, because uh, I've just started doing this, please let me know, so let me know in the comments below this video, and I will see you in the next video. Oh my god. Right, I'll be back with another Spice video later. Goodbye.